Hey guys, welcome to Digit.in and what we have for you today is Sony's 8K TV, the Sony Z8H. Now this is Sony's flagship 8K TV for 2020, but it isn't the first 8K TV that we've seen. Uh, but this is the first time we have an 8K TV in-house, uh, literally with us to experience just like a consumer would. Now, a couple of disclaimers about how we've gone about this review. It's not an apples to apples comparison to compare this 85 inch 8K TV that we have to, let's say a competing 4K 85 inch TV, which will be priced much lower because let's face it, uh, these premium products, these premium TVs, this Sony TV is priced at almost 15 lakh rupees. Uh, it, it has an introductory price of 13 lakhs, 99,990 uh, or about, uh, you know, a lakh more when it has its MRP. But these are again, very premium products. They are priced high because of their premiumness and it is a first mover's advantage if you're someone that's going to get on the 8K bandwagon soon. Now, before you guys all jump in the comments and start saying things like, you know, uh, 8K content isn't available and even 4K content isn't as widespread available. This was the same situation we were in uh, back when 4K TVs launched for the first time where people were like, are we really going to have 4K content, 4K broadcast, 4K Blu-rays, so on and so forth. Same was the case when we uh, came with the full HD TVs for the first time. So. Yes, while the future is something that isn't very clear to us right now as to where content is going, but the fact that it is going that way is, is something that we know. So let's come back to this TV. We're going to look at this TV as an 8K TV in itself, how content appears on this TV, how current content appears on this TV, and how low resolution or standard definition content appears, and what has the experience been like. Now, of course, there is no 8K content publicly available. So coming to that one con that this TV has, it has just one HDMI port, which is HDMI port 4, which is an 8K capable port, and the rest of the three HDMI ports are not. We have an eARC port as well for you to connect uh, your home theater, but a full bandwidth HDMI 2.1 8K port is just one on this TV, and that's a bit of a downer because even when 4K TVs came in, it wasn't like you were getting just a few 4K ports on uh, the HDMI connectivity of those TVs and the rest to a 1080p, right? With 4K TVs, you got all the ports supporting 4K. So it's a little, you know, of a downer to see that just one port comes with 8K. So let's keep that aside for now and jump into the content on this TV. So we played 8K content, which was provided by Sony on the PC. You can see this content up on your screens right now. And the first thing beyond the clarity that one realizes is how bright this TV can get. All this content is in HDR10 and the brightness, the vividness of this content is exactly the same as what we see when we use physical medium. So when we play content of a Blu-ray disc, know that the bit rate is much higher than streaming services. And that is why the fidelity of that physical medium does come out and pop a lot more on this TV than let's say the same content of a streaming service. So be it the content that was provided by Sony and we saw it on that PC which looked brilliant. You are probably seeing those uh, clips on your screen right now. But the content we played physically off our own uh, Blu-ray discs also looked pretty good. So moving now to something that you would watch every day, let's say streaming services and content. Now we have ample content from let's say Netflix and uh, Prime Videos and even Hotstar in HDR. And a lot of this content looks bright, looks vivid. And of course, the first thing that comes to mind, let's say in a show like Our Planet, where you have a cycle of night going into the day, a shot of the sun, the vividness, the brightness, the highlights, which HDR is known for really pop on this TV. And they pop to a level that is beyond any TV we've seen this year or even last year and it goes beyond what we've seen on OLEDs. Remember, the brightness on OLEDs is limited because of the issue of burn-in, but even on LED TVs, like let's say the Sony X95G, which came last year, which was one of my favorite TVs from last year, this TV got way brighter than that as well, which is really nice. Now, the trade-off is that this TV does have a VA panel, which means that you do get deep blacks, but the blacks aren't as inky as we've seen on, let's say, OLED TVs. So that is a trade-off, but that's something that we've seen with all LED, so it's not something that's unique to this TV. But when streaming content of these streaming platforms, when the quality, and it's great because on the remote control, you can press the I button, the information button at the bottom right corner, uh, and you can actually see what quality Netflix is streaming in, and when the quality drops from 2160 to 1440 to 1080, visually sitting 15 feet away, you're not gonna notice much of a difference, but the minute it 
goes below 1080p, when it jumps down to 720p, uh, you know, all the way down 480p and sometimes lower because of the internet connection at your house, that is drastically visible on this TV. Now, what Sony says is that they have a database of content. So when you play normal content on this TV, it is going through that database and then coming onto your TV and that database will evolve over time. This is not the first time we've heard of something like this, but it is something we've heard of in the past. So know that if you watch a piece of content today on this 8K TV and you watch the same piece of content maybe a year or two down the line, you may see that the upscaling has improved and that is something that, uh, you know, is something that we see evolving. We've anyway seen technology from NVIDIA like it's DLSS where it is upscaling content for you to play on games and we are kind of really curious to see how this upscaling works with higher resolution content on TVs because let's say from 4K to 8K it is a pretty massive jump. Now coming to 1080p content, we have the same experience like we did with 4K content on this TV, which is it looks great as long as the resolution it's playing in is at its best fidelity, even from streaming services or Blu-rays. And even off YouTube, if you are going to watch gameplay videos on YouTube, if you're going to watch movie trailers, all of it is a really good experience to enjoy this content on. Where it does lack is when you go below the 1080p threshold. So even if it's 720p, you are going to notice all the jaggered edges. The more you go below that, you are going to notice the drop in quality a lot more. And that is also because of the sheer size of 85 inches. I mean, we've seen the same quality drop on a 4K TV that is 55 or 65 inches and it isn't as drastically noticeable, but it is noticeable. So that is something to keep in mind. Moving on to gaming. Now, this is one place where the TV is absolutely brilliantly beautiful. We've played games like God of War, uh, Ghost of Tsushima. We even played a bit of The Last of Us. And all these games are not even native 4K. A lot of them are 2K upscaled with each platforms, be it uh, PlayStation or Xbox's own version of upscaling. There are a few games like Gears 5, for example, which is in 4K on the Xbox. But then we also played Forza. We also played uh, Assassin's Creed. And Assassin's Creed is one game which is beautifully mastered in HDR for gaming and that game really pops with its highlights. I mean, there's this one sequence we are going to show you right now where you just transition from day to night and the brightness and the vividness with which the day cycle moves is actually something to take note of. Now, all this can be recreated on a 4K high-end LED TV as well if that TV can hit a peak brightness which is goes, let's say, beyond a thousand nits because that is where you need to be to be able to distinguish between these bright highlights and the dark areas. And because this TV has local dimming zones as well, you can distinguish it even even on the same screen if you have a bright area and a darker area which is something you will notice when you consume content in HDR. A good reference point to explain this is if you have uh, an HDR TV, which is a budget TV that can go up to, let's say, 300, 400 or 500 nits versus something that reaches the 800, 900, 1000 nits, it is this difference in highlights that you will notice the most. When it comes to the build and design of this TV, it is huge. It weighs more than 60, 65 kilos and don't expect to set it up on your own. Uh, it is huge, it's heavy, but the thing is, it has this really nice industrial design to it. It has this gunmetal finish all around it on the borders. It has kind of a double sandwich design. It reminds me of the PS4 Pro in a certain way, but it isn't overtly thick. It is thick because it has to house a full array backlighting of LEDs and it does have to cater to the technology which helps with all the dimming zones, but it isn't, un it isn't drastically bad, especially when you consider the size of this TV. Another thing to notice is that it sits flush uh, with the floor or the tabletop on which you will place it and it has two positions for the feet. We use the narrower positioning of the feet because that was just where we felt it worked a little better for our setup. We had to put it on the floor because even though I have tables where you could put this TV, uh, the person who helped me install it from Sony was like, the table is not going to hold the weight and he was right. These TVs are big. This TV is huge. So that's something to consider. The port placement is at the back and we have a couple of ports which are facing outwards which includes HDMI and USB and you have a couple of HDMI and USB port which are facing downwards. The one thing to note is that the HDMI 4 port which is the 8K enabled port is a little far off and that is probably led me to think that maybe there's some separate hardware used to power that 8K enabled port which is why it is so off when it comes to the symmetry of port placement we've seen in the past. But nonetheless, you do get these really nice back panels and covers. So you can do your cable management first and put the back panels to get this really flush look with the TV. 
The TV can also work with uh, as the center speaker on your home theater setup. It has that connectivity also right next to the HDMI 4 port, which is great. So if you have like a 5.1, a 7.1 or a Dolby Atmos setup with a nice amplifier, you can use the TV as a center speaker. And the TV has something called as frame tweeters, which we've seen on Sony's OLEDs in the past, where the screen itself vibrates to emit the sound. So it isn't like the sound is coming from the bottom or the side or the back of the TV. It is coming from the frame itself. And that is nice. Now, speaking of the audio quality from this TV, it has 60 watts of sound output. It's got a couple of, it's got uh, two tweeters, two mid-range drivers and two subwoofers. And holistically, as a TV itself, it sounds good. It sounds loud. This living room where you can see that I'm sitting in, the TV was right there at the back, right below my TV. And I was sitting almost where I am right now, which is a little more than 15 feet away. And the experience of the sound was actually pretty good. Now, you're not going to get bass that's going to come and hit you in the head, which would with, let's say, a dedicated home theater or a sound bar. But it was present enough for all the content that we were watching to have a decent impact. Needless to say, if you are just going to use this TV as a TV, you really don't need a soundbar. And that's probably the first time I'm saying this for a TV, at least if I remember correctly. So let's sum up. Yes, if you are looking for a TV that you want to use at home at a premium price point, you have a lot of TVs from Sony themselves in the 85 inch space, which is 4K, which is HDR, which is a lot cheaper than the 15 lakh rupee price point. You have a lot of uh, TVs from other manufacturers as well in the 85 inch uh, screen size, if that is your preference, because this TV works on Android. Speaking of Android, the UI is exactly the same that we saw on the X90H we reviewed a little while ago. Uh, it is stock Android. It works well. It has these little cards in the display settings. So if you're changing things like motion flow, if you're changing things like the picture preset, if you want to adjust the brightness, you get information about what each setting does. And that really helps you when you want to tweak the settings and if you aren't really sure of what you are tweaking. It also has far field mic, so you really don't need the remote control with this TV to control it. You could just say, OK, Google, switch to Netflix. OK, Google, what's the weather? OK, Google switch to HDMI 2 and I hope me saying OK, Google uh, sparked up, uh, you know, switched on a few of the devices in your house. But nonetheless, you can control the TV with uh, your voice, which is great. The remote control is also the same that we saw on the X90H, which is great. It's a remote control that I like. I wish they'd done something different. Honestly, it could have been this premium uh, trial, experimental, futuristic remote control with the TV. But Sony's gone with tried and trusted, so it kind of just works. So to sum up, yes, there are other 4K TVs that you can get at a cheaper price point at the 85 inch screen size if that is something that you are looking for, if size is something that matters. There is no 8K content right now, but the fact that you can really enjoy content from a wide gamut, be it 1080p all the way up to 4K, just is a testament to how upscaling content on televisions works. Yes, below 1080p, you will face a problem with the content that you are watching, but that is subject to your internet connection and the plans that you have. If you are someone that has a lot of physical media, be it 1080p Blu-rays or even 4K Blu-rays, you are going to really enjoy it on that TV, especially if all that content is in HDR because HDR really does pop very well on this TV. That is something we really enjoyed. Yes, the blacks aren't as inky as we've seen on OLEDs. And if you watch this TV in a pitch black room, you are going to see slight blooming around dark objects, which can be avoided with a little bit of bias lighting in the room. If you leave a curtain open slightly in the daytime, or if you leave a light on in a certain corner of your house, which isn't reflecting the TV directly, then that um, halo effect around certain content does vanish. We aren't going to really give you a verdict on whether you're going to spend 15 lakhs of rupees on this TV or not, because that is up to you. If you're going to be one of the first adopters, this is one of the best TVs in 8K that money can buy. If not, there are a bunch of options in the 4K uh, resolution space in the 65, 75, 85 inch screen size variants for you to choose from. However, this was a look at what the future of technology looks like what the future of content consumption looks like, why LED TVs will still be present even though OLEDs are the pinnacle of colors and blacks is simply because to get those bright highlights in HDR, you do need to hit a peak brightness, which we would not have experienced if we hadn't experienced this TV. So now we have an idea of a certain benchmark of different brightness in a different kinds of content that we consume. So this was our look at the Sony Z8H 8K TV. Uh, if you want to know more about this TV, you can let us know in the comment section below. We will do our best uh, to answer those questions for you and for more from the world of technology you can subscribe to our channel we will catch you in another video it's goodbye for now